So next we'll be defining moving loads as per IRC 6. So we'll click on moving load option and we'll click on moving load code, select India from here. So this is a two lane bridge. The clear carriageway is 7.5 meters. So we will be defining one lane of 70R and two lanes of class A. So first we'll click on this traffic line lanes, click on add and then give the name 70R most eccentric and then I will just change the units to kilonewton meter then eccentricity value will be from the center line of bridge to the center line of lane so the eccentricity for the most eccentric position is 1.155 meters then wheel spacing for 70 hour vehicle it is 1.93 meters impact factor I'm taking 10 percent so I need to input 0.1 and then selection by two points, I need to click on this first box. First, I will switch the view to the front view. And then I need to click in this box, this will turn green. Then you need to click on the first node of superstructure and last node of superstructure. So automatically this data will be fed over here. You click on apply. So this way. So this is the lane which we just defined. I'll just zoom in and show it to you. So 1.155 meters from the center line of bridge. Again, I'll just click on this initial view and remove the display of lane. Again, we will be adding quickly two more lanes of class A vehicles. So I will just give the name class A1. Eccentricity, I will give 2.45 meters and wheel spacing will remain same. Impact factor, I will give as 0.1. And this time we will be defining the moving load using a different technique. So this technique will be helpful in case you are having a curved bridge. So first I will select superstructure elements and then I will renumber them from left to right side. So I will right click and go to elements and renumbering. I will just move this towards right side. So I will just give element number, starting element number as say 200 and then I will click on apply. So after renumbering, we will just select the elements again. So these are all superstructure elements now, 200 to 331. I will copy these element numbers from here and I will just paste it. I will go for select by number and I will just paste it in this box and click on add. And then I can just click on OK. So you can see this moving layer is now defined. Now similarly I will be defining another lane for class A. So I will click on add and I will give name as class A2. So we will give the eccentricity of the lane as minus 1.05 meters and wheel spacing remains same. Impact factor again I will give 10 percent that is 0.1. Again the selection by number and I will input the same element numbers over here of superstructure and I click on add and OK. So this is the second lane of class A which has been defined. I'll close this and I'll go to vehicles and I'll click on add standard. I'll add class A vehicle and then clicking on apply and then I'll select 70R vehicle and then click on OK. So these two vehicles we have added. Now the third thing is we need to associate the vehicles with their lanes. So we need to go to moving load cases click on add. So first we will define 70 R. Uncheck this auto light load combination, click on add. Then I will select the 70 R most eccentric lane, bring it to the selected lane box, click on OK and I click on OK again. So this 70 R vehicle is linked with 70 R lane. Again I will define the same thing for class A vehicles and give the load case name as class A. I'll uncheck this auto light load combination, click on add. Again, I'll just select these two lanes of class A and change the maximum number of loaded lanes to 2 and change the vehicle to class A and then I'll click on OK and again I'll click on OK. So this way the moving load definition is done. So this completes the moving load definition for this bridge.